Hey, BC Boom family, it's your Lisa here. This month, we are talking about identity. Identity is knowing who you are, who you belong to, and why you were created. Our identity in Christ is so essential because as we continue to evolve and um, get exposed to different things and different perspectives, one of the core things that will keep you grounded is your identity in Christ. God created us in his image and we take on his um, on his identity when we become daughters and sons of him. So during this lesson, I want you to think about who you are in Christ and who you are uniquely um, as an individual and how you express yourself. And I want you also to take notes and to, and to think about how you can continue to express yourself uniquely and evolve as the person that God has created you to be. I hope this is good for you. Stay tuned. How we doing? Ready for this? Feel good? Okay. Hey, welcome to this brand new two-week series called Exclusive Drop. We're talking about identity and the truth is, our identities are as customizable, unique, and high quality as a piece from our favorite designer brand. So, what is the relationship between our identity, our value, and our values? How does what we value impact our identity? If you've ever asked yourself the question, who am I really? This series is for you, so stick around. In high school, I went through some stuff, specifically when it came to fashion. Yeah, I had a few phases. I remember early on in high school, I was all about baseball. I mean, I was all about baseball all through high school, but I dressed like it early on. Freshman year, it was like sweatbands everywhere, even when I wasn't sweaty, baseball t-shirts, all of that. And then I went through this like surfer kind of skate phase. The problem was I didn't surf or skate. I grew up in Arizona, so there was no ocean anywhere near me, but I wore all the surf brands. I did my hair the way that, that, that I saw all the California kids do it and all of those things, but it wasn't necessarily really who I was. And then as I got older, I, I had been into hip hop, but like hip hop was a really big deal. And I actually wore this outfit one day to school. I didn't dress like this all the time, but um, yeah, I, I, I had a tall tee, my hat, that's a, that's a fake designer brand case on my Motorola Razor. Okay, don't judge me. It's just the way that I lived. And we all do those things, right? I mean, maybe you can relate to that. Not necessarily the same styles, I don't think, but maybe you look at old pictures of yourself and you see different phases that you went through. You might even call them different identities that you tried on. You had different looks at different times and maybe even different groups of friends. And maybe in each phase and with each group, you felt like yourself even though all those different versions looked and felt very different from each other. When we look at all those different versions of ourselves, we may even find ourselves asking this question, who am I really? And that can feel like a pretty big, maybe even completely overwhelming question to ask. Who am I? I mean, that's a big one. When you ask that question, a whole bunch of labels come to mind. You think of words like funny, friendly, really tall, moody, strong, maybe it's feminine, athletic, quirky, entertaining, attractive, or even focused. You think of the color of your hair or the color of your skin. You think of the family that you come from, the place that you live, the things that you're doing or that you have done in the past. Maybe answering that question feels overwhelming because several things come to mind and some of them don't even seem to go together. You're really interested in other people and an introvert who doesn't always talk in social settings. You're simple when it comes to your music taste, but your style preference right now, it's complex and it's really specific. You love to play sports, but you're also really into the instrument that you play in marching band. You're driven, but you love taking naps. Come on, naps are the best. Or let's take it a little bit deeper. Isn't it overwhelming to manage several different identities across different contexts? For example, you may be managing different identities when you're at drama rehearsal than you do at basketball practice or at church, or you're managing different identities when you're posting to TikTok versus when you post on Snapchat or even Be Real or with your family than you do when you're hanging out with your friends or your teammates or your small group. And all of these different contexts have you managing different identities and that is a lot to carry. That makes answering the question, who am I, really overwhelming. And isn't it true that our identities change? I mean, that does happen. There's who you were in the past, who you are right now, and all the possibility of who you could be in the future. Maybe you've even heard things like, you can be whatever you want. I heard that 
constantly growing up. And that message, it can sound really empowering, but it can also make you wonder, if I can be anything by just picking something, then who am I really? Is there an unchanging version of me under all of my descriptions and labels? Do I get to pick who that is or is that something that I already am and always will be? What's the difference between temporary versions of me versus who I really am? There's some other ways to ask this question. They might sound like this. Can I change up parts of my identity without losing sight of the real me? How many labels can I change and how often before I fully lose sight of who I am at the core? How can I be true to my shifting interests without having an entire identity crisis or, or without feeling like a fake? How do I distinguish myself from everybody else in a way that feels authentic to who I am? What happens when the labels don't fully fit who I am? What if everyone else seems to be okay being in certain boxes, but I don't wanna to commit to any boxes? Does my value change based on my outward identity? Or how about this one? How can I be unique without losing sight of who I really am? All of it leads back to that big question. When the labels are gone and the expectations are gone and the pressure is gone and the freedom is gone and it's just me, who am I really? Because here's the thing, if we don't know who we are at our core, our outward identity will never feel quite right. The way that we navigate our identity externally will never answer who am I really? We're gonna spend a few minutes looking at three passages from the Bible to help us answer who am I really at a core level. And what's really cool is that each of these verses that we're gonna look at come from a different style of writing. To answer the question of our value, we're gonna start by looking at a passage found in the book of Psalms. This book is basically like a book of poetry. And Psalm 8 is traditionally thought to be written by an ancient king of the Hebrew people named David. And it says this, let me read it to you. David writes, when I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. O oh Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Okay, so David is saying that the world is full of incredible things. All we have to do is look up in the sky and see some of them. And thousands of years after David wrote this, we can say that the world is even more amazing than he would have realized. From the latest space telescope and, and what you can see with all of that technology to the most high powered microscope that, that can see things that we would never be able to with, with just our eyes. All of it, it, it's incredible. And yet God made us, you and me, as people, even more wonderful, even more amazing than the most beautiful parts of creation. God's work is impressive, but God made humans the most impressive of all. And this passage from Psalms is a great starting place for us as we talk about who we really are and what that means for our identity. It begins with a sense of wonder, a sense of awe at just who we are as human beings. And before we work hard to earn the label of valuable, this Psalm reminds us that just being a human makes us an impressive piece of valuable work. So to answer the question, who are we? David says, we're made with glory and honor. You are valuable to God. Now that we understand that, let's look at Genesis 1. It tells us why humans are so different. In this book, the writer talks about God creating the world and, and then writes this. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Okay, so right there in the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible, we see what makes humans different from the rest of creation. But even more than that, we read what grounds us, what anchors us, what starts as the first building block for who we are, God's image in us. So to answer the question, who are we? The writer of Genesis says that we're beings who carry part of God's identity or image bearers. Another way to say it is that we're representatives of God. That's our starting point for answering, who am I really? But there's a problem. And the problem is, and, and you and I, we know this, we don't always live like we're image bearers of God. Sometimes we act in ways or make decisions that, that cause us to stand out or even help us fit in. But when those decisions go against our identity as people made in God's image, we have a problem. Sometimes we do things that don't look very much like God at all. 
So while we're supposed to be like God, we tend to make choices that communicate something much different. And that's the problem because that means even though we have God's image, we can begin to live like we don't, like we no longer remember the answer to the question of who are we? Let's talk more about that as we look at one more verse. The last passage that we'll look at today is from the New Testament book of Colossians, and it's written after Jesus had come to earth. This book was a letter Paul had sent to a new group of Christians as a way to encourage them in their faith. Paul wrote this letter nearly 2,000 years ago, but the Colossians weren't that different from you and from me. They forgot that they were image bearers. Because of that, they needed to be reminded of who they really were, and that's why Paul tells them this. Paul writes, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. Look, when we've tried on so many identities that we lose sight of who we really are, we can look at Jesus who showed us what living in the image of God looks like, and he did it perfectly. We study who, who Jesus is and how he lived. We follow that example. We value what Jesus valued. We love like Jesus loved. We forgive like Jesus forgave, and we ground ourselves and our identity in who Jesus is and what Jesus did. So who are we? We're image bearers who sometimes forget who we were made to be. And so we look to Jesus to remind us. The truth is we can look at any number of places and find any number of labels that will tell us who we are and who we aren't. Some of them may even be true for a time and some of them make sense, some of them may not. Some will fit well and others won't, but there's only one person who can definitely answer who you are the who you are that doesn't change, no matter what you do or don't do, no matter what you accomplish or, or don't accomplish, no matter who you become or don't become. What God says about you is the truest thing about you. You were made in God's image to look like God, to show the world what God is like. And in Jesus, we have the perfect example of what that is. So what does that mean for you? It means you get to live out of who God made you to be. And who is that exactly? Well, God is definitely bigger than any one of us. And so each of us gets to reflect God in our own unique way, because you can express yourself uniquely while you stay true to who you really are. And who you are is an image bearer of God. How you express yourself might change, but who you really are, it doesn't. And we can determine what makes us unique while staying true to who we really are, made in God's image. And we do that by asking ourselves some questions. Maybe we wanna ask ourselves, what is most important to you? What do you value in others, in yourself, in the world around you? Are the things that matter most to you right now the things that actually matter most in the big picture of life? Does your life currently reflect any of the things that matter most to you? Do your values line up with the things Jesus valued when you look at his life story? What would it take for you to begin to live in a way that reflects what God is like to the world around you? Look. The question of who am I is a really big question, and trying to answer that can feel really overwhelming at times. But what if you actually started living like you know who you are? Because the reality is that you're made in the image of God. And what if people could look at you and your life and see God because of who you are and how you live? What if you could start to look at others as image bearers and see God in them and not just in the labels that we use? What would it look like if you started to live like you were an exclusive drop from the God of the universe, using you to reveal what God is actually like to the world around you? That's an identity worth living into. And it's the identity that we're all invited to participate in. Welcome back. I hope that you took a lot of notes and that you are constantly thinking about who you are in Christ and how you can continue to express yourself in unique ways. I hope that you have a great week and remember that you are God's child.